Hey guys, in this video, we're going to be exploring when a country puts a tariff on a good. Okay, so we've got a country involved in international trade that's going to put a tariff on a good. I want to say right from the beginning, guys, the diagram that we're about to examine, a lot of kids can kind of get down mechanically. They can even identify the different areas like the government revenue and the change in consumer surplus and producer surplus. But I think when we start exploring it, a lot of times people don't really understand what's going on in the graph. And we want to get it so we fully understand it so that our learning is robust. So let's get to it and take a look at, first of all, at the diagram that is drawn, okay? The first thing I want to point out is that we are looking at a single country's market, okay? It says domestic core market. So this is some country out there, okay? This is not the world market. In fact, I wanna point out that this is the small country model. We are assuming that this country that we are building this diagram for is just a small, almost insignificant part of world trade. They're involved in world trade, don't get me wrong. They're importing goods but they are just a small, small, small part of world trade, okay? So they're a pretty insignificant portion of world trade. Now, take a look at what I have here. Supply domestic. This supply curve has the domestic producers or domestic suppliers taken into account only, okay? No world suppliers are involved in this curve right there. This is the domestic consumer, right? Demand domestic. Next thing. This price right here, where those two curves intersect, is price autarky. Autarky is when you're not involved in trade at all. all. In other words, if this country was not involved in trade in all, at all for corn, didn't allow any imports at all, this is the price that will prevail. I do not want students to call this price domestic, though, unless that country is not involved in trade. If it's not involved in trade, absolutely, it is price domestic. But let's say it was involved in trade, in fact, in fact had free trade when it came to corn. Well, the price world would be price domestic. Price domestic is whatever price is prevailing in the domestic economy, which we're gonna see in just a little bit. The true price domestic is gonna be the price that prevails once the tariff is implemented. But before I get to there, I want to show you this price world. Now, that price world is determined in the world market. So if I had a little more space in my whiteboard, I would draw another graph right to the left of this graph, okay? I would do this kind of horizontal alignment right here. And in this graph, I would show the supply world and demand world intersecting at this price world, okay? So what we're saying is price world is determined in the world market, where you have supply world, every single supplier in the world, in that supply world, demand world, every single demander in the world, in that demand curve, and that's where the price is being set. And what we do is that intersection point of the supply world, demand world, we just pull it over, if we're doing this kind of horizontal alignment, and that gives us the price world, which we also say is supply world. In other words, again, because this country is so small, um, the rest of the world will be able to supply everything this country needs at the price world, or demands, I should say, not needs, everything this country demands at the world price. Now, in this particular situation, if they go with free trade, right? Well, what's gonna be the situation? This is gonna be the quantity supplied, right? That's where price world is hitting my supply domestic. So I bring this down, this would be my quantity supplied with free trade. So this is how much is gonna be produced domestically. Now, at price world, all the way to the demand curve, that's the quantity that is going to be demanded domestically with free trade, okay? So free trade is allowing for the price world to prevail, which means we're gonna have a substantial amount of imports. Again, this is this line's doing double duty. It gives us the price world, but it also shows supply world. In other words, all of this is being purchased right now, okay? They're buying this much from domestic producers, and they're buying, sorry, and this much from foreign producers. So in total, the domestic consumer is buying all the way to right here, okay? So that's what would be happening with free trade, no intervention. Well, then this country decides probably to protect producers, okay, I'm gonna implement a tariff. I'm gonna raise the price of corn domestically. So they decide on a tariff, and let's just go ahead and decide on a dollars per unit, right? The amount per unit, maybe per bushel of corn, what that's gonna be. So this vertical distance is the per unit tariff, right? Per 
unit tariff. Now remember, what is a tariff? It's really important to realize a tariff is a tax on imports, not a tax on, Im not a, sorry, not a tax on domestically produced stuff, just on imports, okay? So when they do that, uh, come up with this tariff, we need to move that tariff onto our diagram. Now, because it is a small country, what's gonna happen is the foreign producers are gonna pass the entire burden of the tariff onto the consumer, meaning that amount of the tariff is the amount we're gonna go up from price world, okay? But I want to just caution you, in the real world, oftentimes big countries put on tariffs on things, like the United States sometimes puts tariffs on things. And when a big country puts a tariff on, thing, it, on things, it doesn't work the exact same way. What actually happens is that price world is actually gonna go down a little bit. What I mean by that is in our diagram, the small country situation, we're assuming that foreign producers are gonna be able to pass the full burden of this tariff onto the domestic consumer because the foreign producers can just go other places in the world to sell their stuff at the world price so they in no way are going to sell at any price below the world price okay but in the real world when a big country does this foreign producers often do have to absorb some of the incidents of the tariff they can't pass it all on to the domestic consumer but that's not our model our model is the small country model so we're assuming foreign producers can take all of their goods and just go sell them abroad. They're not too worried about this market. And they're saying, well, if you want me to sell here, you're gonna have to take on the full burden. Who's gonna have to? You consumers are gonna have to take on the full burden of this tariff. So we're gonna take the whole amount of the tariff and move it up from price world. We're not going to move any of that price down at all. So we draw this across. This is now my price tariff, which I would say is our price domestic, okay? This is the price that's gonna pre prevail domestically. So what does that mean? Well, suppliers, domestic suppliers are quite happy about this, right? That's their price going up, very important. Again, PC domestic and PP domestic are together, they are not being split. This tariff is only on foreign imports. It is not a tax on domestic production at all. So PC domestic and PP domestic are the same. Whatever the consumer hands to the domestic supplier when they buy a domestically produced goods and good or service, that domestic supplier gets to keep the entire amount. So since that price domestic is again, what the producer is receiving, the quantity supplied domestically is going to increase. We're gonna get that movement along the supply domestic to right there. That quantity supplied is going to increase, right? And on top of that, price consumer has gone up. We're gonna get a movement, right? Prices cause movements along the line. We're gonna get a movement back to right there. That quantity demanded is going to recede some. We're gonna see that the imports are now going to shrink. Again, what were the imports? The imports were that amount. And because of the increase in domestic production and the decrease in domestic consumption, imports are going to decrease, okay? Some people might say you'll see that in the current account, okay? You won't have as many debits in the current account, because remember, imports cause debits in the current account. So imports are being reduced. So what does this mean? Well, again, this amount right here is still the imports from here to here. That's still being um, brought in from abroad. So this is my number of imports. That is my per unit tariff, right? This is my per unit tariff. This is the amount of imports, which makes this rectangle my tariff revenue, okay? This is the revenue gained by the domestic country. So let's do our welfare analysis now on this graph, okay? So to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and put in A, B, C, D, E, and I'm just gonna call this um, I guess I'll get rid of it just for now. F and G H. Okay. So what is going to be my change in consumer surplus? Well, the consumer was getting a lot of surplus. Okay, guys, here's the demand domestic. Here's the price they were paying. Price domestic was at P 
W. That's the demand or marginal private benefit curve. So they were getting A, B, C, D, E, F, G. They were getting that entire triangle right there. But then the price went up, and when the price went up, now the consumer is left just with that triangle. They're lo losing D, E, F, and G. So that's quite a bit, right? Minus D, minus E, minus F, minus G. So big deal, right? Tariffs hurt consumers. That's definitely a takeaway that we want. Now let's do change in producer surplus. Again, I'm talking about the domestic producers. I wanna make sure we understand, I'm talking about the domestic producer. Before the tariff, they were just getting H, right? Price world was the price that was prevailing, prevailing domestically. It was the price they were receiving. That price is their per unit benefit. This is their marginal private cost curve right there. They were just getting H. But now that price domestic has gone up, including their price, right? Because this tariff is not on the goods they're selling. So now they're getting H and D, right? So how did I find that? price domestic to that MPC or supply curve, right down the MPC or supply curve. So this is my marginal private cost, my price that the producer's getting, they're getting, sorry, I'm kind of messing that up a little bit, D and H, that means they gained D. The government got some revenue, right? What revenue did the government get? So change in government revenue, they were getting zero, now they're getting plus F, right? There was no tariff, now they put on a tariff, they're getting plus F. So what does this mean? If we were to try to do the change in social surplus, again, this is really important, domestically, just focus on domestically, right? It's just my domestic consumer, just my domestic producer, my domestic government, okay? Change in social surplus domestically. Well, you can see um, DEFG lost to the consumer, D picked up by the producer, F picked up by the domestic government, not E and F lost to the consumer, not picked up by anybody, is gonna give us minus E, and minus G. So we would say as economists, hey, is there any group that you know ended up better off? Absolutely, the groups that ended up better off are domestic producers and the domestic government. But the consumer was hurt so much that overall social surplus in the domestic economy actually went down. How much did it go down by? E and F. So overall, social surplus is going down because of this tariff. Now, of course, there's a lot of complexities. We need to think, hey, was this good, you know, something for national security, or maybe it's a cutting edge industry, or you know, there could be other reasons why we might want to do this that I'm not taking into account in this particular analysis. But so tariff Pravis, everything else held equal, we're seeing that we're getting a welfare loss from the tariff. Hope that makes sense to you. We'll see you in the next video.